Noah isn't happy about moving in with her mother's new husband and her annoying stepbrother, Nick. As their fights get more intense, she realizes how strong her feelings for Nick are. Noah packs her bags and leaves town. She decides to give her mom, Rafaela, the silent treatment. Rafaela wants Noah to think of this as a new chapter in their story. But Noah feels like they're moving out on a whim. Her husband, William, means a lot to Rafaela, and she wants Noah to understand that. But Noah is frustrated about being separated from her boyfriend, Dan, and her best friend, Betty. Rafaela thinks St. Marie is a great school, where she can join the volleyball team. But Noah thinks of William as a stranger, and feels weird about him being a rich man paying for her fancy school. They're greeted by William and his helpers at the mansion. Noah tries to rebel and take her own suitcase, but Martin doesn't let her. William is excited to see her, but she's blunt about how she doesn't think of him as family yet. Rafaela offers to show her around, and everything is grander than she can imagine. Even her room is more beautiful than she expected. Rafaela has worked with a decorator to give her the room she deserves. Noah warms up a little, but learns that her stepbrother lives right next door. She has heard about Nick being the perfect boy, and is already irritated. Rafaela wants her to accept that this is their new home. Noah notices someone behind the bushes, but gets distracted by an embarrassing ringtone Betty set for her. She misses her already, and refuses to wear any of the expensive dresses already laid out for her. She can't stand the extravagance and complains about dinners at the sailing club. Betty asks for a lot of photos. But Noah is hungry, and assumes they won't even have a sandwich in their fridge. She gets startled by Nick when she closes the door, and throws her phone. He teases her about all her complaints and her having a boy's name. She tries to ignore him and turns around to pick up her phone. She comes face to face with their dog, Thor, who doesn't seem very welcoming. He keeps barking at her as she tries to get to her phone. She tries to hit Nick with a pan, but he warns her that Thor will attack if she hurts him. He calms Thor down, and lets Noah know he thinks she's crazy. William and Rafaela notice they have already met. But Noah claims she likes Thor more. She heads back to her room and realizes Betty was on the phone all along. Betty asks if Nick is attractive, but Noah claims she didn't notice. They are late for their formal dinner. Rafaela assumes Noah must be choosing a proper dress. When Noah comes down wearing a t-shirt she got from home, Rafaela is very disappointed. But William decides to be polite, and insists she looks lovely. As Rafaela and William lovingly argue about the music, she texts Dan to call her. She's missing him when Nick drives past her in his own car. William asks Noah to use his last name at the club till she gets her own membership card. Antonio comes to greet William, and Noah pretends to be his wife. William clarifies he's not that type of a guy, and brings Rafaela forward. At dinner, Rafaela discusses how she's not too fond of the summer, but loves the beaches there. Noah points out the forest fires, and William admits there have been plenty. When Rafaela doesn't understand the kind of people who throw cigarette butts out of the window, Noah looks directly at Nick. But they think Nick doesn't smoke, because he's an athlete and a surfer. Nick excuses himself for work, and claims he's going to Mikkel's house to take care of paperwork. He's a law student, and Rafaela thinks that's very promising. Noah taunts him about having the option of joining his dad's company, Leicester Enterprises, if things don't work out. Noah wants to leave too, so the parents convince Nick to drop her home so they can bond. Nick is clearly not the careful driver Rafaela thinks he is. He thinks Noah is invading his space and his house, which is exactly what Noah thinks of him. When he mentions her mom must love her to put up with her, she thinks he knows nothing about a mother's love. He gets angry and asks her to get out in the middle of nowhere. She realizes she is out of battery, and can't even call a cab. She tries to stop a car that passes by. Mario offers help, and lends her a charger. He is headed to a party at the villa, and invites her. He knows who Nick is, and is sure he would have arrived at the party first. When they arrive, Mario warns her about some dangerous gangs. One of them, Ronnie, is fresh out of jail. He brings her to his gang, whose leader is Nick. It's clear Nick is the life of the party, and every girl fights to get a chance with him. Noah punches him for leaving her, and is determined to stay at the party. She threatens to tell William, and burst his bubble of the perfect guy he thinks he is. She also teases him about getting too frisky with the women. He thinks all women are alike and tries to flirt with Noah. She asks him to not make fun of her not tattoo, which means strength. She pushes him away, and they decide to stay out of each other's way. Jenna comes to help Noah, because Mario asked her to check on her. She is Nick's old friend, and knows he can be a handful. Nick greets Lion at the party when Noah gets stressed because she can't see Betty and Dan's stories. Jenna thinks she needs new friends, and asks her to enjoy. Lion asks about the pretty girl Jenna is talking to, but Nick thinks he has lost his mind. Jenna gives her a scarf to protect her from Ronnie's gang. Lion, who is Jenna's boyfriend, comes over to make out with her. Noah notices Nick having shots from a girl's body, and gets judgmental. He notices her looking, and shows her the middle finger. Ronnie finds Noah, and knows she is Nick's sister. One of his gang members offers her two drinks, and she takes the one which seems like plain coke. She realizes there's alcohol in it, and spits it out. The guy tries to force her to drink, but Nick beats him up. Noah doesn't like him interfering, and drinks it to spite him. But he drops her glass, and informs her that this guy is known for 
girls. She feels very dizzy on their way home. She teases him about having body shots. He quietly takes her to her room by picking her up. But she keeps making fun of his ancestors being English. She starts mumbling about glass being liquid when he tucks her in bed. She gets a nightmare about Rafaela hiding her as a kid. They hear a man coming for Rafaela. Noah is pissed with Nick and asks about what happened last night. She wants to complain to his dad, but he thinks she will come out looking worse. Nick is very amused by her and admits he should have recorded something. Rafaela thinks Noah spent the night at Jenna's because Nick texted from her phone. Rafaela thanks Nick for introducing Noah to his friends and is glad their differences are settled. When Rafaela asks if she met any boys, Noah gets irritated. She rants about how no one there compares to Dan. Noah is trying to spend some time on the beach when she gets a call from an unknown number. She notices Nick and his friends coming and asks him to stay away from her phone. She moves away to sit with Jenna as the boys discuss the party. When she overhears him talking about how glass is liquid, she unintentionally checks him out. Some girls want to come to the race that night. Nick pretends there's no race so Noah doesn't know about it. Everyone cheers for Nick as he gets ready for the race. Anna comes to kiss him again, and Lion asks him to be careful on the sixth turn. Nick is racing against Ronnie's team member. Right before the race starts, Nick gets distracted when Noah walks in. He forgets to start on time, and gets a little behind. He gets distracted again when he notices Mario being friendly with Noah. Everyone thinks something is wrong with him, because he is losing focus. Noah talks about strategies to win the race. When Nick wins, Anna comes to kiss him. But Jenna knows Nick doesn't think of her as a girlfriend. Noah gets photos of Betty kissing Dan from an unknown number. She decides to get drunk and starts dancing with Jenna. When she gets more pictures of Dan and Betty, she stops Leonardo and kisses him. Before the final race, Noah tries to get a picture of her kissing Leonardo. But Nick asks Leonardo to get away from his car. He asks Noah why she's trying so hard. She explains that she just wants to take a picture to make Dan jealous. He understands when he realizes what happened with him and Betty. He asks if she will agree to go home if he gets her the picture. He kisses her passionately and clicks them making out. He leaves and informs her that Jenna will drop her home. He comes back to the party and kisses Anna. Noah sends the photo of her and Nick to Dan and breaks up with him. She moves over to the driver's seat and gets excited. But Ronnie is ready next to her because she's sitting at the starting line. Nick hears the race starting when he is in the car with Anna. Noah tries to get out, but Ronnie knows they will lose if she does. He still decides to give her a five-second head start since she's a woman. Nick's friends are confused about why he's not in the car. After the signal, none of the cars move. Noah is using her head start to apply lipstick. She wants to start at the same time, so the people know a woman beat Ronnie. They start racing, and it's clear Noah is very good at it. Ronnie tries to bump into her, but she knows her turns. Things get tricky near the sixth turn, but Noah decides to speed up and still manages to land better. He starts hitting her from the back, but she saves herself and wins the race. Ronnie thinks they're cheaters, because the last race was supposed to be between Nick and him. Nick wants to race again, but since Noah is wearing a bandana, that makes her part of the gang. Noah thinks Ronnie is a sore loser, because he cheated by ramming into her car. But Ronnie is satisfied because it's clear Nick has broken the rules. Nick agrees to pay 15,000 and needs to hand over his car too. But Noah wants Ronnie to know everyone will always remember that a woman beat him. Nick takes her away, but Ronnie makes a rude comment about her. Nick gets angry and starts beating Ronnie up. Everyone gets into a fight, and Nick notices Noah feeling scared. Noah gets a flashback of her childhood days where a man is fighting with Rafaela. Jenna rescues her and brings her to the car with Lion. Nick escapes and joins them too. But Ronnie gives her a nasty look. Rafaela wakes Noah up on the day of William's company gala. Noah gets a text from an unknown number, telling her she should have kept her mouth shut. Rafaela thinks it's a message from Dan, and feels bad about separating Noah from her friends. Noah claims it doesn't matter, and even Jenna turns up to cheer her up. Nick has been missing for four days, but Rafaela is sure he will turn up for the gala. Jenna thinks the hater is Ronnie, and asks her to block him. Rafaela asks for William's opinion on her dress because she's worried about making a good impression. William asks her to stop thinking she's not good enough. When she wonders what he saw in her, Noah watches them having a beautiful moment. William knows he has been in love with her since the first time he saw her. He assures her he's there for her and respects her. Nick's little sister, Maggie, tells him about a boy who wants to be her boyfriend. Maggie is sick, and she is worried their mother will divorce her dad and abandon her like she did with Nick. He assures her he was a bad boy, which is why she did it. He compares her to an angel, and feels bad he will have to leave early. They're all back from the gala, but Nick missed it. Noah looks at his status and finds a photo with Maggie. When Nick reaches home, he notices Thor sitting comfortably with Noah as they watch a movie about racing. He joins her on the couch and comments on how impossible those turns are. But Noah knows they can be done by adjusting the steering wheel. She informs him that Anna was waiting at the gala, but he was with someone who needed him more. She starts apologizing about the car, but he thinks it doesn't matter. He kisses her, and she gets on top of him. When things get too heated, he feels this isn't right. She continues to kiss him, but he asks her to not let him do this again. He is confused about what's happening to him. 
Rafaela calls out to him and breaks their conversation. She is disappointed he wasn't at the event that day, since they were supposed to get introduced as a family. She asks him to talk to William right away. The next morning, Nick teases Noah about cleaning the car. She informs him she will be waitressing soon too. When he tries to come closer, she throws water on him to keep him away. She still thinks he can watch, and starts throwing water on herself. Her mom arrives with a surprise, which is Dan. Noah reminds Nick about the picture of them she sent Dan. She thinks if Dan spots Nick, he will tell her mom about it. Nick doesn't seem too worried. But when Dan calls out to her, she hides his face. Dan feels bad about what happened with Betty, and claims he only hooked up with her because he was missing Noah. She doesn't want his excuses, and asks him to leave. But there's no flight back that day. Lion takes Dan away to distract him when Nick pulls Noah into the pool. He takes her to a corner in the pool where no one can see them. She's worried Dan or their parents will see them, but they can't resist each other. Dan notices her with someone, but Lion makes an excuse. When Rafaela calls out to Nick, their cover is blown. Dan recognizes him as the one from the picture. Rafaela still doesn't know what's happening, and teases Noah about Dan. She thinks the flowers for Noah are from him. There's another threatening note for Noah with the flowers. She confronts Dan, but he has no idea about the flowers. He also knows Nick is her stepbrother, and wonders if Rafaela knows. Noah still denies it, so Dan asks her for drinks that night. A man examines Nick's car and asks if Ronnie managed to torture him. Ronnie promises to bring Noah in soon. Ronnie finds Nick walking on the road and teases him about the car. He wants to deliver a message to Noah, and beats Nick up. Nick tries to find Noah when he's back, but he watches Dan going to her room. He leaves for the terrace and is relieved to find Noah passed out there. When he touches her, she punches him because she thinks he is Dan. She knows Ronnie hit him, and tries to tend to his wounds. Nick knows Ronnie is after her, and suggests that they both need to stop going out alone. She flirts with him and kisses his chest, and he can't help but like it. She claims to always fall for the bad boys, but he wants her to know he's a good person. They hear Dan coming up, and Nick claims he banged his face. Noah knows Dan understands what's happening, and asks him to not mention anything to Rafaela if he wants her forgiveness. When Petra is fixing Noah's uniform, Martin covers for Nick to explain his bruises. Dan is already back on the plane, and Nick feels good about their secret being safe. The letter Noah gets turns out to be another threat promising to make her suffer. They pick Anna up from her house, and she hates sitting at the back. Mario compliments Noah about the race, and Anna knows her dad was a rally driver. Noah claims he died after stepping too hard on the gas. Anna informs them that Nick grew up without a mother, so he wanted to be a rebel and met Lion in Mexico. Lion taught him how to live dangerously. Noah wonders about any dark past Anna might have, but she was always the main bully. When everyone leaves ahead of them, Noah gives Nick a toy car since she owes him one. He thinks seeing her in the uniform was a bigger gift. He takes her to a corner, but she's worried about Anna bullying her. Nick wants her to know he has never felt like this with anyone. He can't seem to control himself. Mario is waiting for Noah, but Nick doesn't think she can settle for someone like him. Nick touches her to make her believe he can give her pleasure like no one else. Lion and Jenna drive up to them, and pretend like they didn't see anything. Noah realizes they have come to watch a fight. Before it's Nick's turn, she asks him to not do it. She wants him to think about how violence affects everyone. But Nick thinks it's exciting and helps him blow off steam. When she asks what kind of trauma he is running away from, Anna asks Noah to leave him alone. From the very start, it's very clear Nick is good at this. But Noah gets irritated and walks off. Mario follows her, and she shares how frustrated she is. Nick manages to knock his opponent down and wins the fight. Mario thanks Noah for inviting her there, and tries to kiss her. But Nick throws him away and asks him to stay away from Noah. She feels bad and apologizes to Mario, but he already guessed something was going on between them. She wants an explanation from Nick, but he has never been jealous before. Noah thinks anything between them can't happen ever again. He holds her tightly to ask why she's messing with his head. She's scared of him, because she can't have another violent person in her life. Noah and Nick stay away from each other after that. She starts waitressing, and even serves food to Nick and Anna. When she takes their plate away, she gets another threatening note. William tells Nick that Noah's dad tried to end her with a knife. Before that, he used to hit Rafaela. He explains some people find violence as a way of blowing off steam. But her dad, Jason, is still alive and got released from prison two weeks ago. Rafaela is scared he will come back to hurt Noah. He asks Nick to take care of her because Noah doesn't know he is out of prison yet. Jason is after Noah because her testimony got him convicted. Jason waits outside the party where Noah's car is parked. She plays beer pong with Jenna and refuses to pick Nick's call. Noah is irritated with guys who can't say I love you after sleeping with a woman, because that's when she thinks it matters most. Nick calls Lion to ask about Noah, but the music is too loud. Jason watches Noah coming out, and prepares to step out. Noah bends down to admire the flowers and pukes. Jenna calls Nick to tell him Noah is wasted, but he turns up right behind them. Jason gets back in the car when he notices Nick. Jenna wants Nick to know Noah is drunk because of him. Noah has also forgotten her blazer, and goes back to the party to get it. Anna tells her it's in the closet, and locks her inside. 
Noah feels suffocated and begs Anna to open the door. She's scared and imagines Jason in the closet with a knife. Nick pulls her out and notices her scar on their way back. He asks why she didn't tell him her dad was alive. Noah thinks he's still in jail and hopes he rots there. She asks Nick to stay because she likes being with him. But he doesn't let her kiss him till the fear from her eyes is gone. She thinks he's very sweet, and she dozes off. Nick wakes up in the morning and wants to leave before the others get alerted. But William comes to Noah's room to tell her something. He finds them there, and Nick tries to explain. But William tells him Maggie's in the hospital. Nick asks Maggie to not scare him like this again. When she asks for her mom, Nick assures her she will be there soon. She notices Noah and thinks she doesn't look as rude as he described. Noah comes to meet her when Nick talks to the doctor. Noah assures Maggie she will always be Nick's favorite. The shock was critical, but Maggie is out of danger now. Nick knows Maggie needs a mother more than a nurse. On their way home, Noah holds his hand to comfort him. Nick stops the car and kisses her. He thinks it's his fault he didn't kiss her on the first day and left her stranded. He claims if he knew about her dad earlier, he would have made sure she feels comfortable. He promises he will never hurt her, but Noah thinks there's no point. Their parents know about them, but he confesses his love for her and hopes her mom understands. Noah doesn't want to hurt Rafaela when she has finally found happiness with William. But Noah thinks if this is their last time, they should make it their first time having sex. They decide to spend the night on the beach, and he makes sure to be gentle with her. In the morning, they know what they have is perfect. She tries to make the most of their time by flirting more. But he doesn't have more condoms, so they stop at a gas station. Noah texts him from the car and is surprised he's back so soon. But it turns out to be Ronnie. She shouts out to Nick, but his card is getting declined. He wants to hurry and thinks she has pressed the emergency button for fun. Ronnie kidnaps her and takes her away. The police show them the footage, and Nick recognizes Ronnie. Nick tries to apologize to Rafaela, but she's disgusted after finding out about their relationship. William asks Nick to leave Noah alone once she gets out. He is disappointed with all the races and fights. Rafaela finds herself tied up and teaches for the water. She thinks the man in the dark is Ronnie, and shouts at him for taking revenge just because she beat him at a car race. It turns out to be Jonas, who is proud she beat Ronnie. He feels like he taught her something useful. He also admits he was sending her the letters. The detectives find the letters from her room. Rafaela gets a call from an unknown number. She hears Noah's voice, but Jonas takes the phone away. He calls Rafaela a gold digger, so William gets offended. But he calms down to ask Jonas what he wants. Jonas asks for a million in cash and only wants Rafaela and William to be there. The detectives find out that Ronnie and Jonas were in jail together and shared a cell. Jonas asks Robbie if he wants revenge on Noah because she beat him. When Ronnie claims he doesn't, he knocks him out. Rafaela and William are waiting for Jonas at the location. Nick turns up there too, because he can't sit back. Through a camera at the spot, Jonas watches as Rafaela tells William he is unlikely to show up. She knows Jonas wants to see her and Noah suffer. When Nick picks up the car Noah gifted him, the detective asks if he lost it in a bet. Nick is irritated he still pays insurance for it. But he knows he can use the insurance tracker to find them. The detective alerts all units that they have found them, and Jonas overhears this. Nick waits outside the garage when he notices Noah driving it with Jonas. Nick follows them, but Noah is too fast. She escapes the police cars, and when Jonas spots Rafaela, he shoots at her. But William saves her with his bag. Noah asks why he couldn't stay like the guy who taught her how to drive. He reminds her that he was two races away from being a world champion when he was put in jail. He has seen how happy they are, and doesn't like it. As Nick chases after them, Jonas tries to shoot him. They're soon out of options, and Jonas thinks it's the end of the race. He puts the gun on her head, but she and Nick get the same idea. They both start the car and attempt the impossible turn they saw in the movie. Noah and Nick bend down so the detective can shoot Jonas. Rafaela and William thanks Nick for saving her. Nick sneaks into Noah's room that night to comfort her. He assures her no one will ever hurt her again. He tells her he loves her after sleeping with her, and she feels like Jenna must have told him something. He admits Lion did, but he wants her to know he means it. She thinks their story just is starting now. William and Rafaela know what's happening between them, and Rafaela plans to stop this at any cost. 